What's up, PT Kids? It's Miss Jasmine here to bring you another week of Sunshine Band. But before we get started, of course, we got to open up with a joke. We have to laugh, right? So here's our joke for this week. What kind of person was Boaz before he met Ruth? What you think? He was ruthless. Get it? Ruth. List. He didn't have her. Okay. I'm really going to need like a little drum, like a put um poom at the end. Okay. <laughs> All right. So of course we're still be, we're still doing a focus on black history. So you still see my, um, my tablecloth here. So we, we know that black history is American history, but we take time in February to, uh, just focus on contributions and people who have made an impact either in the past or the present um, for black, with, when it comes to black history. So the person that I am going to be presenting to you for black history, his name is Nolan Davis. He's an eight-year-old boy who lives in Kirkland, Missouri. Uh, he made an impact just recently. This was last summer, 2020. We know there was a lot going on last summer, right? So Nolan ended up organizing a march called Children's Black Lives Matter March. And the reason why he did this was because for him to be a young black boy, he has already been groomed to be aware of how society views him. And he's having to basically interact with society way differently than his white friends. So for once, for one, he has to, like if he wants to play with a water gun, he has to do it in the backyard so that nobody mistakens it for being something else. Or if he's wearing his hoodie, he has to keep the hood down off of his head so that he doesn't look suspicious to someone else. So when Nolan was interviewed, he basically just expressed how he felt about having to interact with society differently. He says he hates it. He says, I don't like how black people have to feel scared when they are just walking down the street or going for a run. So when he organized his march, he and his mother thought mm, maybe only 50 people would show up. But astoundingly, there was 700 parents and kids that showed up to this march. And so during the march, Nolan had like the little microphone and he basically said this. He said, I'm worried about black people like me getting hurt. Some skin is like chocolate, some like vanilla, some is, some is mixed together like mine, but we are all people. Nolan also said, even though I am a kid, it's important to speak my voice so people can hear me and how they can share their voice too, just like me. So good job, Nolan, keep it going. And Nolan's story is showing you that you are never too young to make an impact. Okay, so we have been in the series called Among Us. Shh. So you're probably wondering why I'm doing that. You might wanna watch last week's video, <laughs> but we have action words in our lesson, and that was one of them. So when I say among us, you're supposed to go shh, right? We're gonna have another one today. So we are in week two, and this lesson, so we're gonna do a quick recap. So we learned last week that among us, shh, the followers of Jesus, the, uh, we are the followers of Jesus, the expectation of greatness is identified by being a servant. Uh, we also learned that we can be great at school and at sports, but that type of greatness is not what gets us into heaven. We must, be, we must become servants of God. So this week, we are going to be learning about loving others even when they are sus. So the word sus is our action word for this lesson. So you got to remember among us, which is shh. And then for sus, when you're just when you are when you think someone is sus in the game, you end up um, pushing the emergency meeting be, uh, emergency meeting button, and then you discuss. And this little graphic comes up of two crewmates discussing. So we're gonna act like we're discussing who we think is the imposter. So the action for the word sus is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got to If you have a sibling, or if you're look, if you're watching this with your parent, you can act like you're both whispering to each other who you think the imposter is. Okay, so here's a question. So we all deal with someone who has been difficult at times, and maybe we've been that difficult person. We know we must love everyone, but how are we supposed to deal with those who annoy us or who may or who we may consider an enemy? 
So Among Us, shh, we would consider these imposters. So in the game, imposter starts off looking like everyone else. He just looks like this little crewmate, just like everyone else. And your goal is to help your crewmates accomplish a set of tasks. The imposter's job is to sabotage the, sh the ship and like kill everybody off. He's trying to keep you from winning. So players start to accuse the other players of who they think is sus. <laughs> An so who's the imposter, right? But why are they doing that? So the world has shown us how not to treat others. We've seen a lot in the media, social media, on TV, from political differences to racial tensions, our nation and world has been filled with violence, anger, and attacks. So our lesson is like the game Among Us. Shh. It's simple, but not easy to do. So our main scripture is gonna be in Luke 6, verses 27 through 36. It says, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those who, from, who, from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High and daughters, <laughs> for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful even as your father is merciful. Really, Jesus? Okay, so we're going to look and see Jesus' example and how we can um, follow his footsteps. So this sounds weird. That's why I was like, really? Okay. It sounds weird to us because it's the opposite of what we're used to seeing. And, but this is not a game. And well, what we're used to, the opposite of what we see in the game. That's what I was trying to say. And in everyday life. So Jesus is not saying that bullying or any kind of abuse is okay. And he's also not saying that hurting yourself or hurting others is okay. So what he is talking about is our everyday lives and how we tend to only do good things if there will be something in it for us. So in Among Us, shh, the only reason you complete a task is so your team will win. Jesus is showing us that we must do more. We must love everyone, even our enemies or people who are sus. Shh, 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 shh. Let's look at how well Jesus did this, did this challenge. So looking at Jesus, he spent um, his time with his 12 disciples. At the end of his earthly ministry, he was celebrating the Jewish tradition of Passover. He started the night by being a servant and washing the disciples' feet. Now, why is that important? So looking at Luke 22, 21 through 23, it says, but behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me at the table. For the Son of Man goes as, if, as, as it has been determined, but woe to the man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another, which of them it could be, who was going to do this? So basically, who was sus among them? Okay. So we don't know if the disciples really knew who it was, but Jesus definitely knew who, was, who the imposter was. And by him knowing, he still treated Judas like all the other disciples and washed his feet. He served him. The man who turned Jesus over to be arrested, tortured, and killed, Jesus treated with love and kindness. So what about you? You probably have people who annoy you or who are really your enemy, someone who's abusing you or bullying you. So as a disclaimer, this means pay attention. This is important. You should always talk to an adult. 
and seek help if someone is bullying you or abusing you. That's never okay. But have you ever prayed for them? This doesn't make what they did okay, but it does help us live a life and treat people the way Jesus intended. So what about online? Can you be the one to leave a loving comment or instead of starting arguments or saying something rude under someone's video or picture? This rule for living that Jesus modeled for us is simple to understand, but hard to live out, right? We can do it with the Lord's help, though. So if you're feeling like there's no way I can do this by myself, our first step is salvation. We need Jesus in our life to help us live the way that he lived. We can't do it without him. We can't do it without his Holy Spirit. So I'm going to lead you into a prayer of salvation. And once you have received Jesus, he will start walking with you and walking this out with you so that you can treat others the way that you would like to be treated and the way that he wants us to treat them. So just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for me and rose from the dead. Come into my heart. I want to trust and follow you. In your name I pray. Amen. All right. That's all it takes. It's, remember, it's nothing you can do to earn eternity. It's nothing you can do to earn Jesus into your life. All you got to do is accept the gift of salvation. So we are just finished our second week of our Among Us series. So we next week, we have another lesson and in our series. And make sure that you are treating others how you want to be treated and not looking sus out here. Okay, see y'all later.